Throughout the remainder of this course, we'll be using the ggplot2 package in order to put together different types of data visualization. Before we talk about ggplot, though, it's important to understand the grammar of graphics because it's kind of like the theoretical underpinnings of ggplot. Let's talk about what it is. The grammar of graphics is as follows. We take data and we map that data to aesthetic properties of geometric objects, and sometimes along the way, we do statistical transformations of our data. So, for example, we have data. We choose which parts of our data are mapped to the x-axis, which are mapped to the y-axis. We can also map things to color, to fill, to the alpha, to, that's opacity. And then we choose which geometric objects we're going to use. Do we want to use geom point to put points on our graph, making like a scatter plot? Do we want to do a histogram, geom bar, geom line? Um, and then statistical transformations we'll talk about shortly, um, particularly when we talk about bar charts in ggplot. Let's actually look at an example of a chart to get a sense of what this kind of abstract idea is really talking about. Um, here's a chart from the New York Times. Uh, it was published um, recently, I think 2017, maybe 2018. And it was looking at the rising rate of inequality in the United States. So looking at it, you can see we've got the um, cumulative change in income here. We've got the year here. We've got the various groups. And you can see the top 0.1% is increasing much more rapidly than other groups that are shown here. OK, let's talk about what's going on here specifically as it relates to the grammar of graphics. So we start with data. Obviously, we're not seeing the data set here. They're not publishing the data set in the New York Times in the print edition, although more and more you can find online the original data sets that are used for visualizations. But just know that there is, of course, data that underlies this. The data is then mapped to aesthetic properties. So if you recall, in terms of our aesthetic properties, we have x, y, color, fill, alpha. There are a number of other ones. We're just talking about these, though. So we can see that the y is the change in income for each group is mapped onto the y axis. And onto the x axis, we are mapping the year. Okay, Those are our two. Um, aesthetic properties that we're always going to start with when we're producing um, a, a visualization in ggplot. Next, you can see that color is mapped to income group because, for example, the top 0.1% is in green, top 10% is in a kind of dark gray, middle 40% in a light gray, and bottom 50% in a red. So you can see the color is not just random, it is mapped to income groups here. And then finally, we choose a geometric object. So here, this is represented as a line. So we use geom line. You could, of course, map this to other geometric objects. For example, you could map it to bars, and you could have uh, bars for each group that show the uh, cumulative change each year. But for this chart, the New York Times chose to use a line graph, so they use geom line. So hopefully you're starting to get an overall sense of the, the way that this works. Don't worry if not everything is 100% crystal clear, because we'll go through a number of examples that should really clear things up for you. Let's talk now about ggplot and what this actually might look like in practice. First, just a note, ggplot2 is the name of the package, although it's often referred to just as ggplot. The function that you're going to use to start out all of your visualizations is called just ggplot, no 2 on the end. Um, just don't get confused with that 2. So this is kind of like what the code might look like for this visualization ggplot, and then the first argument we're going to have is what's our data, because remember we're mapping data to aesthetic properties. 
So data equals, say we had a data frame called inequality underscore data, comma, mapping. So what, what are we going to map to aesthetic properties? So we're going to say AES aesthetics right here. We want x to be equal to year. Just imagine we have a variable called year. y equals a variable called income change. And color equals group. Remember these income groups we had here, and we noticed how they're each different colors. Okay. Then we do, that's the end of our ggplot function. Then we add a plus sign. Note that the plus sign is kind of like the um, pipe in the tidyverse. Um, for a number of complicated reasons, ggplot uses a plus sign, but just know that it's kind of chaining together a bunch of functions. So we're defining what we're doing here with our ggplot function, and then we add geom line to say we want a line chart. 